Hello, hello, welcome back to another video on the channel where healing and spiritual growth are front and center. This video shout out goes to, uh, you know, Donna. I have several of you all with the same name, so this goes out to all of y'all. Thank you for your continued support. And I wanted to dive into this red flag. Oh, boy. Thank you, fellow warrior, also, because this was so subtle that if we're not paying attention... You know, letting the spiritual ears pick this stuff up, and we'll miss it. You know, what happened when we were under that cloud of cognitive dissonance? Mm-hmm, during the narcissistic abuse and all the traumatization and things like that. We didn't notice these things right away. But you know how a lot of narcissistic abusers have told us, you know, and, and we always dismissed it, obviously, because we were smitten, right? We thought we were in love. We were being love-bombed, Okay. So we didn't, we didn't, we didn't believe them when they told us this. You know how they would tell us, "If you only knew who I was, I'm afraid you'd leave me." That's what they say, or a variation of that. But there is another way that they will say these things, right? And a lot of times, all they'll say is, "If you only knew." Okay, what's that supposed to mean, huh? If we only knew what? Oh, I think we can fill in the blank. Okay, so if they cut it off right there, that's a subtle way. And so, yes, you've identified a narc. Absolutely. Because, I don't know about y'all, but I don't think empaths, we don't go around saying stuff like that. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, it's like, what? You know, it's like, if you only knew. And then you can add at the end of that. And what they're trying to tell us is if we only, only knew who they really were. Oh, but see, here's the thing. When God awakens us to and from the abuse, we do know. Mm-hmm. Right? We know that they're doing the bidding of the devil. We're dishing out all that abuse and then the word salad trying to induce confusion. Remember, God is not the author of confusion. Okay? And so it's just another way that the narcs tell on themselves. Okay? So we want to be very mindful of that. That if someone comes at us and we're just like, say you're having a, a moment of just a brief conversation. Because, yeah, we're to test the spirit by the spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because a lot of these narcs, remember y'all, they they can put on an act. Okay? Because uh, they've been doing it their whole lives. Right? They don't know who they are, so they're copying everybody else. That's a big reason why we see, mm-hmm, how they all are, you know, behaving the same way. And yes, remember, we had to unlearn some of that stuff too, okay? Look, chosen empaths never engaged in all of it, for we caught a lot of it as weird and odd before we realized they were red flags. Okay, so we're like, oh, okay. And so we, now we realize that. And so now we know who they really are, right, underneath that cool person persona or that macho bravado persona they like to put on. We know who they are now and we know what they're doing and we know why they're doing it. Okay? Because they're doing the bidding of the devil. Try and take out as many people as they can. Right? And that is, you know, spiritually you are. They're trying to take out. Yes. And the psychopaths and sociopaths, they want to try to take us out. You know, in the physical as well. But remember what God tells us about that. Mm-hmm. Say, so be not afraid of them that try to, you know, kill the body. Okay? Because after all, once we are reborn in Christ, our, our flesh, you know, yes, we're still physically here, obviously. But what God means by that is we're no longer, we're not walking by sight. We're not, yeah, we're not lusting after. We're not, uh-uh, no. Right? All of, we're putting away all those childish things and, and keep on keeping on. That we're not doing that. We're not coveting. We're not envying. We're nothing. Okay? Unlike the narcissistic abusers who continue to walk around in their flesh and for the flesh. Right? But God tells us that we are to fear the one who can destroy the body and soul. Okay? While on this planet. And soul. That's spirit. Spiritual. Okay? And so we got to remember that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> when God tells us that, you know, that, that, is, that is what the fear of God is all about. Is to protect the kingdom of God. And not let the enemy get control of our minds. Ah, there you go. Right, so that's a big thing. And so watch out for that, you all. Seriously, watch out for that red flag. And if y'all can think of some additional, additional ways that they would say that, let's drop that in the comments below so we can learn from each other. 
Like, cause there's a lot of variations of how they'll say these things or even allude to them. Right? Like, if you only knew. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. We got it now. All right? And, and again, we do know. Okay? Because all it takes, yes, all it takes is just that, you know, one or two red flags. We go, hmm, okay. Test the spirit by the spirit. And, and let the full finish speaking first. We're big on that one as well. All right? So we learn to let the full finish speaking first. First, and here's another one, you all. That they're oh my gosh, yes. A lot of the narcissistic abusers who claim to be Christian, listen, all right? They will use scripture, but you will know because if, they, if they're trying to explain a particular verse, and you can tell automatically that a it's word salad, and b they clearly did not get the spiritual interpretation, obviously. And that what they're inter how they interpreted it makes absolutely zero sense. Right? You'll notice that. Because the more that God lifts that cloud of cognitive distance, the more clarity we get. We pick up on this stuff. And so it's like when a fellow warrior shared that with me, I was like, um, wow, it clearly did not understand what God was saying in that verse. Oh no, 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 no. Remember, see, because you gotta have the Holy Spirit, okay, to interpret scripture correctly and to understand Jesus' parables. Oh yeah, that's huge. See, again, God's strategic, y'all. <laughs> okay? Very strategic. You know, he spoke in parables. And so that's a lot of what we do. Right? And only those mm -hmm, who are awakened and the spirit elevated. Yes, you were raised to spiritual body. Yes, the chosen one. You don't understand what we're talking about. That's why I say a lot, too, that narcissistic abusers, if they hang around on this channel long enough, it, just, it, it goes over their head. <laughs> oh, their demon spirits understand very well. But the human host, mm -mm, no, not going to get it. Because I remember when I brought up the subject of spiritual energy. It went clearly over their head. They did not get it. Nope, 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 nope. Because that's what the battle is all about, really. You know, for the mind, is all that. It's a spiritual energy transfer. And it's all the narcissistic abusers trying to see if they can get their negative emotional garbage uh, to, you know, dump it off on others, what they're doing. And so we realized that. We're like, oh, okay, okay. And so we don't want to get tripped up by that either. If they're using God's word, if they know it, because a lot of them do. Remember, the enemy knows the Bible too. But the enemy uses it as a movie script, and he uses it literally, okay? Yeah, for, for all of the ones who have been duped into taking it extremely literal. Because it, it's highly spiritual. Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, while there are some truth in the, in the literal sense in Scripture, yes. But we also have to understand the spiritual side as well, because there's a, there, there's a lot of metaphors and Jesus used a lot of metaphors because he knew that the enemy was going to pull this crap. <laughs> okay? He knew the enemy was going to pull that stunt with this event or that event or that event. And then could get people all tripped up into thinking that, oh, you know, a, a doomsday coming or whatever. And we're sitting here going, yeah, but God tells us that. When ye hear of wars and rumors of wars, right? We're not to be troubled because the end is not by and by. Okay, see? You know, it's like, okay, okay. So, no, that's why, you know, God, God's a motivator, you all. To remind us just to keep on keeping on. Keep going forward. To get in our purpose, right? Yes, so we can do the perfect will of God to please God. Okay, and the God Spirit and others were big on that, huge. Okay, but we gotta have that discernment as well. All right, so you gotta know that. Uh, so that's why we want to bring you these little tidbits when they uh, come across our path, so that you be aha. It's all about helping you with that discernment as well, and letting God do that, because you pick up on these things. You're like, okay, wait a minute. All right, and then you know it reminds me. Of when a narcissistic abuser will also use scripture to abuse. Oh gosh, yeah. When we learn to say no and set boundaries, go no contact and things like that. Oh yeah, a narc will turn around and ask us, oh is that what Jesus would do? Um, you know, Jesus walked away from the crowd as well. 
when he when he noticed a lot of toxicity, Jesus walked away. Yes, he did. All right, he did stick around. You know, it's like it, it, it's like we said that we turn it over to God. And remember how Jesus said, "Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do." And He's talking in the spiritual, you all. Oh yeah, they know in the physical when they're dishing out a, a certain abuse tactics. Okay, they know that that's occurring. They don't know the why. Like I said in a previous video quite a while ago, they don't know the why. But what Jesus is talking about is that they know not what they do in the spiritual, because they don't know. Okay, that they're doing the bidding of the enemy. They don't know that they're being, they're controlled by the demon spirit attached to their mind. They don't know that. And they don't realize that they've got the ism mindset. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. Now, we're not talking about the ones who do. Okay, you all. Again, we're never, ever, we're never discussing. The ones who know that's what they are and, and they like it. Yeah, no. Okay, because those would be what would be considered an aware narc. Okay, like they know that's what they are. They like that. They like that about themselves, and they don't care. So we're not talking about them. Okay, no, we're not. No, mm -mm. we are focused on, you know, exposing the behaviors, the wickedness that God instructs us to do with the corrupt and unawares, the spiritually corrupt and unawares. Okay, because they don't know. Right? That's why we can turn it over to God. Yep. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do spiritually right they, yeah completely unaware and a lot of times we wonder whenever they come out with these little statements if you only knew that do they even realize that's what they're saying you know it, it really is a fascinating thing it's like do they realize that they're saying that because then we know if we go back later and remind them that they said something they'll tell us they don't remember saying that or they'll deny they even said that and so it, it makes you wonder, because see, that's all part of the narcissism game to induce that confusion. Mm-hmm, the cognitive dissonance coma. And so it's like, oh, okay, hold up. But I think we know that they do know. Mm-hmm. So in a way, you know, a lot of us talk about how they don't know who they are, and that's true. They don't know who they are in Christ. That's right. They don't have their own unique self-identity. They could, but they got to get Jesus. That's it. First and foremost. They could. But if they tell us if you only knew. Well then they've got to have some level of awareness. That they're not who they're presenting themselves to be. I mean after all. When they told us if we only knew who they were. That they're afraid we would leave them. Well then that lets us know. They, they, they know they dish out the abuse. And they know that they're going to run people off. They know that what they're doing is wrong, but keep doing it anyway. Huh, okay. See, they don't repent. You know, in order to repent, we have to realize and acknowledge, oh, we just made a mistake, oops. And then we ask God's forgiveness, and we don't do it again. Narcissistic abusers, they don't do that. Right, because really, they have, what they do because of their own deep level of cognitive dissonance, is that they will find some way to justify their bad behaviors. They will find some way to excuse it. And, of course, blame their target for it. Mm, we're very familiar with that. How they'll turn it around and say, oh, well, they tell us they wouldn't have said or done that if the target hadn't done or said what the target didn't say or do. All right? That's why when you ask a nar narcissistic abuser, you know, like, oh, okay, okay, so what is it that, that, that we did wrong? Oh, I don't know. I mean, that's classic. They have no clue. Right? And so, when they don't know, or they'll make something up, and we know, right? because we know ourselves, right? All right, then. So, we know better. And we, they try to tell us how we think and how we feel. We know better. And we know what they're trying to do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so, we're like, mm, no. <laughs> that's not going to fly. And so, we get better with that, you all. Keep going, all right? We get better with that, that, that sharpening of the discernment going forward. And we start to catch that that's how these narcissistic abusers tell on themselves through the little red flags, all right? All of them. And so, you know, again, you know, they're even those subtle ones. I was like, you know, that's really intriguing because that's how they do it. 
All right, and so we pay attention. That's part of that vigilance and awareness that God says we need to have so that we don't get tripped up or we don't let the enemy put us back to sleep. See, that's the thing. We've got the power and authority in us to not let the enemy put us back to sleep. And, oh, he doesn't like that. But, as always, that's too bad because that if we're, not, we're like, no. You know, we do. We take on the role of a parent in a lot of ways, you all. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. By learning to tell them no. Telling the enemy no. Say, ah, 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 ah. You know, no more. Because we're not tolerating it. All right, we get to that point. That's what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to tolerate that abuse. Uh, 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 uh. No. All right, but the enemy, of course, wants us to. But too late. All right, because once we see it, we can't unsee it. Never forget that. Okay, yeah, no, we're not walking by sight, but still, God knows, because that's God showing us, okay, what we need to see, so that we don't get duped again, over and over again, all right, yes, over and over again, <laughs> okay, you all, as always, if you've got any questions, you know where to reach me for additional information, insight, and other good stuff, then check out these videos right here, sending love and light to all fellow warriors, thank you for watching and for your support. Till next time, let's show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father, and you keep being you, in Jesus' name, amen.